Russian properly, you know, there's two things that I'm told. First of all, get a Russian girlfriend. Okay, I'm working on it. <laughs> Second thing is um, go and live somewhere where people don't speak so much English. Go and live with Russian speakers and then. So I'm considering for a while. I want to go to Volgograd because I've studied the Battle of Stalingrad so much. I want to really see what happened there. Maybe I'll stay there for a little while and try and know the city better. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Football, APS, uh, what, uh, what's your favourite team, uh, uh, British team and the Russian team? I've been to a few games here. I'm, I'm football, is, uh, it's interesting, I don't, I'm not a fanatic about it. My, I, the team I support is my local team in Britain, which is called Lincoln City, and to be honest, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's pretty, they don't win very much. In Russia, I've been to a few games, I've been to three games, I went to see Russia versus Azerbaijan, which was uh, an interesting experience. <laughs> the crowds are very lively, let's just say, yeah. When you're going up the escalators of Sportif and I, and all the coins are going <laughs> down, the lights are being smashed, and you just think, please, let me survive. <laughs> They're very, very energetic fans. And then I went to see uh, uh, Siska versus Manchester United, and I was sat in the middle of the Siska Ultras, the middle of them all, so I was not speaking any English. <laughs> <laughs> very quiet. Siska! <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah. <laughs> that was it. I think that Russian uh, football fans and Russian footballers, I, I like the atmosphere actually, because when you, when you hear about it, people say, or, oh, you know, um, one Russian told me and sat me down before a game and said, oh, you're English. Um, I'm a Russian football hooligan, and I learned everything I know from your football hooligans. So if there's a problem with football hooligans, it's our fault, Natasha, because the English have invented the problem. But um, I would say generally, actually, Russian football fans are... Uh, it's great to be in a football match and to see it because they're all jumping up and down. And I, Russian football fans are, they're like, um, like choreographed. They're, they all do everything so perfectly. The Mexican waves and the flags and all the jumping, it's all a perfect timing. We go to an English football match, they're all too busy punching each other and drinking. It's, too, it's, all, it's all chaos, but in, England, in Russia it's, it's very well done, I've got to say. <laughs> Yeah, so I would say my, my experiences of football in Russia have been very exciting ones. Yeah. Anyone else? Would you like to ask questions about, I don't know, about culture, about uh, any jokes? Uh, uh, I want to know how is the And we discuss it with them and they say that the uh, language itself just sounds for them like some drunk uh, persons. Oh, oh really? Yes. <laughs> don't know why. Maybe they only talk to drunk people. No, 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 <laughs> but like what? For example, it's like a stereotype that, for, for example, uh, French language, it's uh, like romantic language or something Italian, it's like uh, yes. something else, but what's about Russian? Well, they say the stereotype is that Russian is a very hard language, <laughs> crawling your arms, and if you can't speak it, you are weak. But, but I would say, generally, um, it's not like it's, um, it, it's a It's a nice stereotype to have, I think, but... Um, I mean, the thing is also that the, the rolling of the R is, um, in England, it's seen as actually, because English, you don't really need to roll your R's, um, but there is the, the rhyme in England, brown, ragged, rock, ragged, rascal, ran, and they teach it to English kids because if an English person can roll their R's, they're seen as um, better educated, they're seen as more, as having, being able to speak English better. So when the Russians, if you perfect an English accent, you can roll your R's, people will think, wow, you're, wow, you're, you're very, very clever and well-educated. Um, so I would say, I, I like listening to it. And um, Well, what, what do you think about the English language? You're all here, you know, as part of this. What do you think about how it sounds, how it works? What's frustrating about it? Is there anything frustrating? No? 
That's easy. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I heard some Russians say, my, my Russian teacher was trying to teach me Russian, which is difficult. <laughs> um, she says that um, the problems when Russian students, the problems they have learning English is all those stupid little words that we have in, on, under, and, about, to, all these, all these little words that need to go into the sentences is um, very, very difficult. You know, I don't know, maybe it's not so difficult, but um, for me, in Russian, learning Russian, the main problems for me are obviously the endings, changing all the endings in the words. Mm -hmm. Try to remember the rules. Oh. So I always, I'm used now to basically, um, people talk to me like I'm an idiot, but I'm used to it because <laughs> I know I sound like an idiot. You go up and you say, oh, I've just said that in the past tense, and I'm supposed to be asking for a, a coffee, you know, I'm supposed to, I've just said, oh, can I have had a coffee, you know, or, or I, I, I'm Python, it just is like that. Whereas Russian, I'd say, is logical, like a system, quite a system language. So once you learn it, Anything about jokes? No, no, about jokes. Okay. I read some that go with the joke. Russian, I mean, Russian. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I would like to. Um, I would like to read the Master and Margarita. I'd like to read Quiet Close the Dog. Most of the, I've read a lot about Russia, but most of what I read is non-fiction, actually. I've read a lot about, uh, about the war and history books and things, which is quite boring, I know. But, um, so, the other thing is that that people tell me about that, and it makes me think, maybe it's not a problem, but obviously when they're translated, you're not, you're not reading the author, you're reading the translator, which I don't know how much, some people have said that the, when you read it in Russian and read it in English, the meanings can be quite different. I don't know whether they are or not, because I can't speak Russian or not. But maybe I should just give it a go and see. see. The greatest literature in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Anything about uh, different different food, different impressions of English people? Yes. Um, to a degree, every big city is the same, but also each city has its own uniqueness. When it comes to pace, I would say Moscow is fast. It's fast. I would say um, commuters in, in London are similar to Russian commuters. They have the head forward, they know where they're going to go, they'll push you out of the way to get there. I think it's the same both cities. Crazy. Crazy. Um, what's different is the traffic in London, because the roads are so awful, I was about to say something else, the roads are so bad in London, the traffic only moves about this fast. Yeah, it's, uh, that's the fastest you can move in a car, so it's points on your car in, in London, whereas in Moscow, okay, when it's rush hour, no one goes anywhere, but otherwise the Russians all drive as fast as they can go, which is it makes sense, I suppose. You know, if you if you if you are a rally driver, you can drive that fast. Then then good. Um, I would say that there is one difference: is that the babushkas here have an authority and a power. <laughs> 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 there aren't so many. 